Hi everyone, this video is about bug converter steady state analysis. I know I made one one year before, but let's see if I can do better this time. There are two states to describe converter operation. One is steady state and another one is transient state. I will make a video later to describe the detailed difference uh, between those two states. Now we just need to know that when we start a converter, the converter needs some time to prepare. And we can think as the preparation time is the transient state. And when it works as we designed, that's a steady state. So the question followed is why we do steady state analysis for converter. We use the value we calculate in steady state analysis to guide us design the circuit. So we can calculate the minimum and the maximum inductor and capacitor through steady state analysis. And by plotting the waveform on each component, we know the maximum current or the voltage to help us to design the switch or the diode. This is a topology of bulk converter. There are two operation modes in bulk converter, continuous conduction mode and discontinuous conduction mode. Let's start with the easier one, continuous conduction mode, also called CCM mode. For any type of converter analysis, we first separate the on and off of the switch. This is when the switch is on and this is when the switch is off. Uh, after we plot this two, we can plot the waveform of the inductor uh, voltage. We can see that when the switch is on, this point is V in and this point is V out. So uh, the voltage across inductor is V in minus V out. And when the switch is off, this point is to the ground, so it's zero. And this point is um, V out. The uh, voltage across the inductor is the minus V out. In the converter steady state analysis, we have two principles can use. The first one is used on inductor. It's called volt second balance. This principle means the average voltage applied on inductor must be zero. On the plot, it means the error of this two should be equal. Then we can plot the inductor current. We first assume the current increase linearly on inductor, so we can have current waveform like this. As the average voltage is same, so the current starts from this point, and after a same cycle, it goes back to this point again. The difference between the maximum and the minimum current value is the delta IL. We call this value as current ripple. The middle line here indicates the average current value. I got a lot of confused about the uppercase letter and the lowercase letter for this kind of value. So in a lot of textbook, we use uppercase letter for constant value and lowercase letter for waveform or variable. Uh, according to the inductance definition, we can have two equations for on and off states. And as we regard the current change linearly, we can have the delta i as this. So this two equation is used to calculate the current ripple. You can either use the on state or use the off state. It doesn't have any difference when it's work in CCM mode. Because the left side of the equation is equal, so we can make these two equations equal together. Then we can have the relation of duty and input output voltage. The last thing we can calculate from here is the average inductor current. We can see that the inductor is always connected to the load no matter it's on or off state. So the average current is just simply equal to V out divided on R. The second principle we use is capacitor charge balance. 
This means that the average current applied to the capacitor must be zero. The waveform of the capacitor current looks like this. It's the same waveform as the inductor current without this DC offset. The capacitor waveform is the integral of the current. So when the current is positive, the voltage increase. Because this is not linearly increased, so we can just approximately plot this voltage waveform like this. Delta V here is our voltage ripple. The charge balance means the charge and discharge on the capacitor cancel each other in one period. To calculate the capacitor charge, we can use the arrow of here. So we know that the charge is 1 over 2 delta I L over 2 because this is only our half current ripple and times half period. We also know that the charge of the capacitor equals to capacitance times the voltage change across the capacitor. So by equal this two equations together, we know the value of capacitance should be delta I L divided on 8 times frequency times delta V out. We also use this equation to calculate delta V out, which is our voltage ripple. Let's move on to the DCM. The DCM mode is the discontinuous conduction mode. It happens since the inductor current is saturated to zero. You can simply think as the switch off period, the inductor run out its energy and cannot push more current into the circuit. So the circuit will look like this. So in the waveform, we will have a third period is zero period. At this period, both the current and voltage is zero. The DCM mode happens usually because the load increase and let the average inductor current lower down and lower down when it lower under the half of the current ripple, it reach to here and we got the third period zero period the boundary between the dcm and ccm is when the average inductor current equal to half of the current ripple however we don't know when this zero period start so to calculate the current ripple in dcm we can only use the on period equation we can still use VL divided on R to calculate the average inductor current. In some textbook, they have a value called R critical. This is a resistance calculated from here. And this value means that any value larger than this resistance can make this converter work in DCM. What important happened in DCM mode is the output voltage is no longer for the duty equation we have in CCM. To find the duty and output voltage relation, we use the power balance. This means um, the input power is equal to the output power. And our PE is input voltage times input current equal to b l squared divided on r. The only thing we don't know is this input current. To calculate the input current, we can use the switch current to calculate. So let's first plot the switch current waveform. The average current on switch, we can use the arrow here and divide it onto the period delta i l times dt divided on 2 
average onto one period and we know that delta IL can be calculated uh, of V and V out at this L times PT and average. When we put this back into our power balance equation, we can got a quadratic equation like this. And by solving this equation, we can know the output voltage in DC mode. As I said in the beginning of this video, the steady state analysis is used for component design. So usually in the circuit design, we first will know the parameter of our target converter. They will give us things like the V out, V in, and the nominal power. the switch frequency and the delta i and delta v. This is the current and voltage ripple. Usually it will give a percentage number like this. This means for example 15% is 15% of inductor current or 5% of output voltage. Then we use this equation to determine the nominal duty and we use uh, this and this value to calculate the inductor and capacitor value. Uh, the last step is using the calculation value to choose the uh, inductor and capacitor value. Sometimes we calculate a number that cannot um, find a commercial uh, component in the market. So we choose a component that's slightly larger than the value we calculate. There is another type of questions happened in exam are examining questions. You will get the component's value of inductor and capacitor and the question will ask you to check the current and voltage ripple or to calculate the output voltage. This kind of question are widely used in the exam questions to torture you because teachers can make the converter work in DCM mode. And when you follow or decide and boom, you are wrong. So be careful to check when you are in exam if the capacitor is working in CCM or DCM. Okay, I put these two questions in MATLAB. In this spot converter design file, we can see that I put all the specification of bulk converter here. If you are going to use the script, you just need to change all the parameter here. And by run the script, we can get the duty inductor and a capacitor value. And I create this bug examining file. And in this file, the specification of bug converter changed to uh, the value of inductor and capacitor. First, we assume the converter work in CCM. And if I find the average current is smaller than the duty, it goes to the DCM mode. And use solve to solve this quadratic equation to get the output value. Uh, so here we have um, resistance as 30 ohm, and we can see that uh, it didn't jump to the DCM part. The V out still 5 and it's uh, V in times duty. And let's change this load to 50 ohm. And we can see that it jumped to the DCM mode and our V out becomes to 5.37 volts. The bug converter can simulate in MATLAB Simulink. I made a video before about how to um, build this simulation model in the Simulink. I will not repeat to do that again. 
I only will answer some questions I got from that video. So first, this Power GUI is like a solver of your simulation model. And uh, a lot of you don't know how to set this sample time. Usually we set our sample time as 1% of our period. So what this means is we calculate a hundred times in one period and this stop time means how long do we want to uh, simulate this model. For some of you, if your simulation work really, really slow and waste a lot of time, the first thing you can change is to make this stop time smaller. I also got a lot of questions that you can't find the inductor capacitor and uh, here I use a variable resistor for later use, but some of you can't find the resistor. Uh, it's not called as inductor capacitor or resistor, it's called RLC branch. You can use either parallel RLC branch or serials RLC branch is equal because uh, if you are going to use only one of them. When we design the circuit, we need to change the value of the inductance capacitance a lot. And we also want to use a same model for different uh, design for different value. How to do that? we can put a variable in this block. How MATLAB use this variable is it will go find this value in your workspace. Okay, so let's use our simulation model to check uh, the value we calculated here. Uh, we can know that the output voltage is around this 5.43 and the value we calculate here is 5.37. Uh, it's uh, all regardless as same because um, because I didn't change any of the value inside the MOSFET or diode and those components are not the idea now. Till now we have a bug converter, but in the real world, the input voltage and output load is not fixed. We will have disturbance in the input side and the load is changing. Here I add two disturbance in the input voltage at uh, 0 0.01 second and 0 0.02 second and change the load to a very small number at 0 0.06 second to simulate the load unplug from the converter. Let's have a look of the simulation results. First, we can see that because our duty ratio is fixed at 0.5, the output voltage cannot maintain at 5 volts. It follows the input disturbance. And at 0 0.06 second, when the load is unplugged, the current jumped to a very, very large uh, value. It's almost 50 amp. We do not want any large current happen in our circuit because uh, it's very dangerous and also can easily burn out the component. So how to solve these problems? We will answer this question in next video. Thank you for your watching. Bye.